Hello, welcome back to uh, Vinyasa Flow with Yogi Eve. Um, today we're going to be doing a, a, a flexibility and mobility Vinyasa Flow. Um, so, no power in the class, so if you're not a power yoga fan, then um, maybe this is the one for you. And you know, if you are a power yoga fan, then um, this is also good for you as well, because this will bring in quite a nice balance between the power and the, and the nice flow inside, the flexibility side of our practice. Um, so we're going to get right into it from now. If you use any blocks or straps or any equipment you need, have them handy and just use them at your leisure. So we're going to come into a child's pose this morning. Nice and long in your child's pose. Placing your hips down to all your heels. And then just taking your mind and just let it wash over your body and any tension that you're feeling or any thing going on in your head at the moment, be it something that's happening in your day or just in your life generally at the moment, we're just going to leave that on the mat here. We're just going to take one nice full, slow exhale and then just leave all that aside. And then as we start our breath, through our inhale and our exhale, just start to bring your, your practice into your mind. Give yourself that little bit of time to really enjoy your practice. Benefit from the flexibility and the mobility that you're going to share with your body today. In your child's pose coming up onto your knees and hands. So your hands are underneath your shoulders, your knees are underneath your hips. And we're just going to round our spine up into our cat. And then as we inhale, we're just going to dip our spine down. So moving through your cat cow. Just through that exhale and that inhale, through that lovely circular flowing, calming, relaxing movement. As many times as you feel you want to work through in this time that we're doing this practice together. And then from the top of your cat spine, we're going to sit back into another child's pose. But this time not held, we're just going to push the hips back reach the hands forward, come over the top of the cat spine, keeping your arms straight, just dropping your hips towards your wrists, lifting your chest into this sort of high cobra, and then back to your child's pose. So it's almost like a bigger variation of what you've just done. So if this doesn't suit you, as you come over the top of your cat and into your cobra, you know you could always stay with the cat cow. And we're just going to do maybe two more of these. So just finding a little bit of mobility in our back, right at the beginning of the class, lifting the chest and pushing back to that lovely child's pose. Keep child's pose active, nice and deep through the hips, nice and forward through the hands. One more time, into that high cobra and then just back to your knees and hands. Exhale and take your right arm off the floor, take it all the way up to the ceiling or the sky. And then threading the needle through, as far through as you can, so maybe even your shoulder will brush the mat. And then reaching that arm back. On the exhale, we thread the needle through. And on the inhale, we reach that arm to the ceiling or the sky. Twice more like that. And last time, on the exhale. And reaching up, inhale. So that right arm comes forward at the same time, you're going to pick up the opposite leg and just find a short hold here. So this is a lovely stretch for your back, working all the muscles in the back, almost as if our arm and our leg are the, the weights, the tools that are making our back stronger and warmer. We're going to bring our elbow to our knee into this little kneeling type curl, exhale, and send that arm and leg, inhale. Three more times like that, as you curl, and then as you lift and you stretch, exhale round, inhale lengthen, last one, and then just that short hold again. So just your hand comes back to the mat, we're going to bring your left knee around, so your knee wraps around the outside of your elbow or tricep, and then lower the knee down and lift the leg, so it's this hip hinging. Feel like you've got a little resistance going on. And we're just going to do this maybe three more times. So just getting into the, the function of the hip. On 
this last one, holding the knee up by the elbow on the tricep and then step the foot forward. You're going to walk your hands forward maybe or just shift your knee back. So you're in a lizard lunge and you can be on your hands or your fingertips. And then just have a little move around. Think about you as, as if you were sort of drawing a figure eight with your hips. Or maybe just that little sway side to side. Anything that sort of makes your hips feel a little bit less tight. And that little feel good movement into your hips. And then just find a little bit of stillness there also. So we're going to take our left thumb up, take a twist in, and while that arm is raised, just wiggle your left foot a little bit closer in. Maybe place it where your hand was. And then lower that hand down. Tuck the back toes under going to lift the back knee off the floor. You can leave it on the floor if you need to and come up into a high crescent lunge or maybe just a crescent moon. And then explore the length through the sides of your body. So you can go as deep into your legs as you wish. I want you to think about space between your hips anchoring you down and your rib cage, your sides lengthening all the way up. And if your balance doesn't bother you, Maybe even take your eyes up towards your hands. This one time we're going to take our arms behind our back, link our fingers together, and then really boost that feeling in your chest by pulling the knuckles all the way to the back calf, but then really squeezing it a little bit more lift into the front of your chest. Release your hands back all the way back up to where your eyes are looking, and bring your hands either side of your front leg. Let's step back to our first plank today. So high plank, legs around about hip distance, head shoulder width, and finding some height in your plank. Come all the way down onto your belly. And then as you inhale, let's just find a low cobra. Somewhere where we can just melt these shoulders down your back. And then come back down all the way through your chest, chin, nose and forehead onto your belly. And as you come up to your second cobra, tuck your toes and find your first downward facing dog of the practice or maybe of your day. And however you feel with your first down dog, whether you just want to pedal the legs out a little bit or even just march them up and down. If your hamstrings are super tight, you could just take that option. Or you could just be a little bit like you were in your lizard lunge and just be a little bit more creative. Beautiful. Let's come forward to a new plank and then drop both knees back to the floor to your tabletop position. Let's just take a couple more rounds of cat-cow because it is all about mobilising and creating flexibility today. So let's get into that lovely freedom of our spine as we round. And we just dip into that back then, keeping your chest lifted. And just a couple more here as well. Up into the top of your cat spine, pushing so you feel in the skin on the back, stretching. And come back to the tabletop spine. So this time we're going to take your left arm straight up. I always sort of imagine I've got a weight in my hand. So as I thread through that needle, there's a little power involved, a little push and a little pull of that arm and lifting that arm high. Just keep that going, we're maybe going to do about four times here. Threading on the exhale, reaching how high on the inhale. Let's do one more like that and then lengthening up. Reaching that arm forward and picking up the opposite leg. And just finding that short hold here. See if you can find a little bit of stillness and steadiness. Rounding the knee, elbow in, that little knee in tiger curl. Exhale out. Curling in. And stretching it out. Two more times. How much length can you find? Last one, best one. And just that short hold here. One more time. So just the hand comes down. Bring your knee around to your elbow or your tricep. Press that hip down and pull that knee high. Again, feel a little resistance in the push-pull. Just getting into the movement of that hip here. 
let's do three and lift down two and last one hold that knee up by your elbow and bring that foot around and you're just going to have to move your hands a little bit or you're going to shift your knee back whatever feels okay for your hips somewhere where you can have a little play around through these hips be a little exploring so just relax with it it doesn't matter there's no right or wrong even if you just want to take a hold and be a little bit more cautious absolutely let's take our right arm up so we take a twist into that leg and then as we do that we're just going to wiggle our foot in a little bit and place your hands so it's just outside of your foot this time tuck your back toes under try it you never know if you need to though you can always put that knee down and come up into your high crescent lunge on this side so we've got these legs strong and grounded so i want you to explore that length through the sides of your waist flexibility through our spine through our torso and then even see if you can lift your chest just a little bit higher so while we're here we're going to take our arms behind our back link your fingers together squeeze your shoulder blades together and then how far down the back of your leg can you reach your knuckles how high and proud can you breathe into the front of the chest releasing the arms back to where your eyes are looking bringing your hands either side of your front foot and stepping back to your plank from your plank through vinyasa we're coming all the way down onto the belly or halfway if you wish find your cobra inhale or up facing dog tucking the toes under and down the facing dog so this time let's just take a short hold here making sure your legs are around about that hip distance apart spreading your hands out so you have so much width between your fingertips and then just walking your feet all the way to the top of your mat hands to your shin bones inhale so your spine is halfway it's spacious heart is forward as you bend the knees bend both knees or as you fold over your legs bend both knees and be a little bit like a ragdoll. Any movement you hear you need as well, just to relax and loosen you up. So we're gonna place both fingertips on the floor, or all fingertips on the floor, and come back to our flat back spine. We're gonna bend our left knee only, keep our right leg straight, and reach our right arm up. So straight leg and lift that arm. And then maybe even a little turn to look at that hand. And then bend that right knee, place your right hand on the floor, straighten your left leg and take your left arm up. So it's like a little wonky hip stretch. Let's do that one more time each side. So inhale down and then exhale up. One more of those. Inhale down and exhale, reach that left arm up. Come back to your ragdoll, both knees bent. Bring your hands to your shin bones, straighten your legs, straighten your spine and bring your arms all the way up above your head. You're going to link your fingertips together and for the first time, a few times today, we're going to turn our palms inside out to the ceiling. Take a side stretch to your right side. Oh, how does that feel? And centre and take a side stretch to your left side. And centre, push those palms all the way up to the ceiling or the sky. And then release the hands, maybe give the hands a little shake out. And bring the hands all the way down to Namaste. So nice and easy with the shoulders. Finding the top edge of your mat. I'm actually going to change ends on my mat so I have you on the screen when I'm, I come to that side. We're going to take a breath in and extend the arms high. Exhale, fold forward, do straight or slightly bent legs into your forward fold. Inhale, lift the chest so your back is flat. Exhale, take a fold to your legs. As you lift your chest, gaze is forward, you're going to step or you can jump to your plank. From your plank to your belly or come halfway, Chaturanga. Inhale, find up facing dog or cobra. Exhale, back to our down facing dog. 
So looking forward at your hands, we're just going to step your right foot in between your hands. And as you inhale, come back to that high crescent lunge that we started with. Now being tall through the spine, and you know maybe you can even go a little bit deeper into those legs now. Bringing your hands from above you to your chest, to your heart, to prayer hands. And we're just going to start to lower our back knee down towards the mat and back to lunge. Let's do that again nice and slowly. And back to lunge. Let's go a little bit quicker if we can for five and four and three and two. Now hover that knee off the mat on one. And as you circle the arms back above your head, straighten both legs. Bring your palms together. Now, if you're, you're, there's courage there, and if it's in your practice, we're going to take a little back bend from there. And as you exhale, bend in the right knee. You're going to bring your left elbow to the outside of your thigh and twist your lunge. From your twisted lunge, if you want to, we're going to bring your left hand to the mat. Take your right hand to the ceiling. Spread out your arms. Spread out your wings. Intensify that little squeeze into your waist. And then bring your hands back to your prayer hands. Now you're going to spin forward to face the front of your thigh. So you're hovering just above the front of your thigh. And all I'm going to ask you to do, if you can, is push your arms forward and just hold that hover. So we're low, we're off our thigh, our heel is pushing back, our fingertips are reaching up. And we should then start to activate and warm up all these muscles in our back. Holding yourself there for one more breath. And then bring your hands either side of your front leg and step back to your plank. From your plank, find the vinyasa to your mat or halfway. Inhale, find up facing dog or cobra. And back to your down facing dog. Exhale, amazing, well done. Now, if you need a little pen out in those legs from side one, absolutely. Or maybe just come back to that nice calm and full breath. Let's step our left foot in between our hands. When that leg's there, we're coming up into your high crescent lunge, reaching tall through the spine, bringing your hands from above you to your heart. And then just on this side also, just slow dip of your knee down. It doesn't have to touch the mat. It can if you wish. Nice and slowly. You can always keep it slow and just do a couple. Or we're going to go a little bit quicker for five. Five. And four. And keep that chest lifted. Three. Shoulders relaxed. Two. We're going to hover there on one. Circle the arms up, straighten the legs out, and if it is there for you, just take that tiny back bend, little wobbly back bend, <laughs> and then bend the left knee, opposite elbow to thigh, and find that squeeze into your waist. Let's make our waist nice and supple. Placing your right hand on the floor if you wish to, you don't have to. You can always put your back knee on the floor as well. Open out that twist. Beautiful. So as we bring our palms back together, we're just going to spin to face the front leg. You can leave your hands here or bring them out in front of you and start to feel those muscles in the back stretching and active and warm. So my challenge to you here is how far you can push back into your heel and how tall and high you can reach up through your fingertips, very nice and strong. And then bringing your hands either side of your front leg. Step back this time, just to a downward facing dog. Exhale. Beautiful. So from our down facing dog, we're just going to spin our feet. Maybe to the, let's go to the left corner of our mat. Imagine you're holding something between your knees, like a cushion or a block. And then as you bend your, your knees, and you're sort of going down into a, a wonky child's pose, like you were up in the air in child's pose, feeling that stretch all the way through the right side of the body. And then straighten both legs so your heels face the back of your mat. And then turn your feet to the, the right corner of your mat, keeping your legs parallel. 
pressing your hips down into this wonky mid-air child's pose and then come all the way back up and press the heels all the way back and down, downward facing dog. So let's just have a look at our hands again, step our right foot in between our hands again and when that foot is there come all the way up into your high crescent lunge. Bring your hands to your chest and then bring your opposite elbow to the outside of your left, your right knee again. But this time keep your, your hands in prayer and then from that twist bring your right elbow to the inside of your knee. Spin your back foot to the floor and find yourself into this variation of side angle. And like you did before, if you want to, just spread out your wings from your side angle all the way up into a warrior two. And you might just need to pulse out that first warrior today. So just check in your form here. You want to feel that lovely stretch on the inside of your thigh. And you'll find that by drawing your knee back towards your little toe. And you want to feel strong and stable through both right and left leg. So really firm into your back leg and your back standing foot. Inhale, straighten both legs. Take your arms all the way up so your palms touch above your head. Exhale, come back to your warrior two. Let's do that twice more. So let's go up on the inhale. Coming back strong, deep and powerful on the exhale. One more time. Inhale. And warrior two. Exhale. So we're going to bring both arms up one last time, but this time straighten both legs and turn your feet to face forward. Link your hands together again and push the palms of your hands all the way up. Now take the hands from above you to behind you and then push the palms of the backs of your hands all the way down towards your mat or your tailbone and lift in your chest all the way up towards the ceiling. Exhale, fold forwards. Weight is coming into the balls of the feet if that's possible. And then just see what you can do with these arms today. Bring your head down. Let your arms just tumble over your head. Have a little play around like you do in your child's or like you did in your lizard lunge. Just be a little playful with the movement in the shoulders. Sometimes I imagine I'm trying to wiggle out of a tight sweater or a tight dress or something. But you just sort of got a little bit stuck. And you're just trying to wiggle out. So there's no forceful movement there. Let's just hold that one more breath. Getting into the lovely mobility of our shoulders. As you inhale, bring the hands to the back. Knuckles facing the back of the room. Heart facing the front of the room. And then as you lift the arms back again, go all the way up with the arms first. Now turn your feet out to the two corners of your mat. And then as you come down, we're going to bring our hands behind the back of our heads into this variation of our goddess. So chest is open, shoulders back and down. We're going to just tip towards our left thigh with our elbow. And then towards our right thigh. And centre. Let's do that twice more each side. Exhale. And to the right side. Now on this last time, let's see if we can go a tiny bit deeper. You know, maybe even you'll be someone who can actually touch that thigh with your elbow. Hold this right side. Place the arm on the inside of the thigh. Take the left arm all the way back up to the ceiling. And then level the weight between both right and left leg. Really tempted to load this right leg. Really see if you can get some equal feeling in that right and left leg. And then bringing the arms forward, staying in your squat, we're going to bend our left knee and drop down into animal squat. Just bring in your animal lunge, bring in your hands onto the mat. We're going to spin onto the heel of your right leg. And then if it's there for you, we're going to take this right arm up. Or maybe we're even going to throw it away a little bit behind us. Let's come all the way over to our right leg. And let's do it this side as well. So do what you can with this. This is about your hips. 
So as you take that left arm up, and you can always keep that hand on the floor. Now we're going to go one more time to our left side, keeping low and gracious and light. Hands stay on the floor. We're going to come one more time to our left side, right side. Left and right is amazing. <laughs> and then turn to face the top of your mat. Lift your left leg and reach it up to the ceiling or the sky, stand in place. Now if it's in your practice, you're a little more advanced, you're going to find the back of your ankle with your right hand and you're going to do what you can with that standing splits or both hands on the floor if you need to. Now as you release the grip of that right ankle, both hands to mat, lift your chest and see where you can go with that left lifted leg. We're going to take a squat down, a little curtsy squat, touching our calf with the back of our knee. And then send that leg high as high as you can. It doesn't matter about the height. Let's go again. Exhale, curtsy squat. Inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, curtsy squat. Inhale, stretch it out. And we have one more the same. Let's go low. And let's stretch that leg out. Now, as if we're coming into one more curtsy squat, but we're going to bring that leg all the way to the floor behind our calf and ankle and come to our seat. And you might have to just wiggle that foot across your knee, you might have to wiggle that heel away from your seat bone, but we're going to wrap your left arm around your knee. And as you exhale, let's give ourselves a little pause here as we take our gaze over our shoulder and find just a little bit more calm in the breath. So we can keep our spine lifted and tall and our twists nice and relaxed and breath led. One more breath here. Relaxing through the back of the neck, softness in the shoulders. We're going to bring both arms around to the other side of your leg. And then just do a little spin around so you're facing the other end of your mat and take a stretch back into child's. Exhale. Come over the top of your cat spine. Tuck your toes under. You might just do have to do a little sort of funny little walk, crab walk to the other end of your mat if you find you're tumbling off your mat there. Then come into downward facing dog. Let's take that our feet and twist them to the right side first. Bending the knees as we just squat down into that wonky little child's variation. Child's in the air. And then back up onto your toes. Turn your feet to the other corner of the mat, the left corner. And go nice and deep and low, feeling that all through the right side of the body. And then back up, spin the heels to the back of the mat, press the heels down, downward facing dog. Let's come forward to our high plank. Take a vinyasa to the mat or halfway. Inhale, up facing dog or cobra. And down facing dog. Exhale, amazing. Let's step our left foot in between our hands. And come up once again into a high crescent lunge as lifted as sweet as the very first one bringing your palms together and just sliding your hands to your chest you're going to bring your right elbow to the outside of your left knee and twist that lunge exhale but then we're going to bring our left elbow to the inside of our knee and spin our back foot to the floor so we're in our variation of side angle. If you want to, you can take your left hand to the ground and open your right arm up, spread out your wings. Coming up into your warrior two on this left side. And you can have a little pulse into that leg on this side as well. So try and sort of level out, share the weight between both right and left leg. Drawing your knee out towards the back end of your mat. So this really nice feeling on the inner hip and thigh. Relaxing through the shoulders and powering up through the arms. Taking a breath in, straightening both legs, reaching the hands 
all the way above you, inhale and then coming back to that strong, powerful warrior two. Let's do that twice more. Inhale, and nice and strong, exhale. Again, inhale up, and exhale. Beautiful, so we're gonna go all the way up with the arms, straighten out both legs, turn your feet to face forward, interlock your hands, push your knuckles or the palms of your hands up to the ceiling, reach the arms behind the back, do the same with the hands but pull them down towards the mat and lift the chest up towards the ceiling or the sky. Exhale, fold forwards. Weight in the balls of the feet, you're bold and brave, see how light you can be on your heels. Be patient and relax with their shoulders. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't want to work. On cold days they tend not to want to work. So however you feel here, maybe your hands will touch the ground. Maybe that's a stream, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Just check in your knees and your thighs are lifted, your belly drawn to your spine. And then as you come up halfway, send your knuckles to the back of your room, bring your chest forward, taking the arms all the way above the head again. Turn your feet out to the corner of the mat, your heels in towards one another, and come down into that goddess. Hands coming behind the back of the head, elbows out nice and wide, chest spread open, bringing your right elbow to your right thigh and to the other side. Let's see if we can just tip a little bit deeper and center and the other side. One more on the right, can you touch that thumb? And center to the left side and we hold, place the arm on the inside of the thigh, take the right arm up, distance between the fingertips of the right hand and the fingertips of the left hand, and then bring that weight over into that right hip and neck. If you won't want to, it doesn't feel quite so, so nice, so easy, but see if once you're there, it starts to feel okay, I'm sure. And let's hold this one more breath. So then taking the arms all the way back above you, this time we're gonna link our fingers together again Turn our palms inside out again, and we're gonna take some little pulses. So we're gonna pulse for eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, eight more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, hold one. Bring the arms forward, drop to the right side of your mat into your animal lunge. Spin onto the heel of your left leg. If it's still there for you, we're gonna throw that left arm away. Amazing, then lightly on the mat with the fingertips. How little can you use your hands as you move across to this left side? And then all the way up with the arm. Finding this lovely flexibility across the front of the shoulder and the chest, right through the arms. And then this time, my challenge to you is as we come to that right side, no hands. And to the left side, no hands. We're gonna do it once more. So over to our right side, and over to your left, they're done. So spin to the top of your mat. You're gonna take your right leg off the floor, stand in splits, Again, if you're feeling warm and strong and brave, you're gonna hold the back of your ankle or calf with your left hand and just squeeze a little deeper into that fold and lift a little higher through that standing leg. Both hands to mat, chest is lifted, gaze is forward, curtsy squat, knee to calf. And then send that leg high, inhale. Three more times. And lift, how low can you go? And then all the way up. Last one, big reach with those right toes. 
and then as you bend the knee, come all the way down, sit yourself down, wiggle that right foot away, squeeze that left foot under, bring your right arm to wrap your left, and let's just take a twist here. And this just feels so nice, doesn't it? Just to have a moment to bring that breath back to calm and balance. A little squeeze into our waist, a little deep box into our waist. Absolutely amazing. One more breath here. We're going to bring our hands all the way around to the other side of our leg. Do a little spin around and come back to your child's. You're nearly there, but from your child's. Let's see how it feels now. We're going to come over the top of our cat spine and drop our hips down towards the back of our wrists, lifting our chest high. Coming back to your child's pose and moving through those two movements, just twice more. So from cat to your high cobra, from your cobra to your child's. One more into your high cobra. This time as you push back, tuck your toes and downward facing dog. A lovely stretch. So if you think about it, we've stretched out an awful lot of our body. But let's have a think about maybe our, our joints as well, our finger joints and our toe joints. So to start with, we're just going to lift and lower our heels and press down. And we're going to just be, if we can, a little bit brave to come as high onto those toes as we can and press down through the heels. So just saying good morning or good afternoon or evening to your, your toe joints, of course, if it bothers them, don't go there and then gently press down through the heels. Now from your down facing dog, now come up onto the very fingertips of all 10 fingers, like spider fingers. And then just feel the weight as you fingerprint yourself into your mat. Try and sort of relax the shoulders open, maybe even softly pull the elbows away from the head and just count yourself down here if that's acceptable. For five and four, for three, two, and then start to share the weight back down through the hands. Just gonna have a look at your hands, bend your knees, stretch your chest back towards your thighs, and either step, walk, or jump yourself into a seated position at the top of your mat. Free the legs out in front of you, and then come all the way down onto your backs, hugging your knees into your chest. Perfect. Let's have a, a little massage out through this back side to side, around and around. How are we feeling? Hopefully still got a little bit of energy left. So we're just going to be playful with our hips for a couple of moments. And then we're going to be a little bit working into our flexibility of our hamstrings. And then we're done. So place your right foot on the floor, bring your left ankle to the outside of that right knee, and then bring your right leg in. So we get this sort of variation of pigeon pose as we squeeze this leg in. You should feel the outer part of your left hip really tugging and that's what we want. And the tighter you squeeze, the more you feel. Now we're going to take our left elbow and tuck it underneath the back of our knee and then hold our, right, our left foot with our right hand. So we can take our right leg all the way back to the ground and that leg can be straight or bent and then hopefully get our head back on the floor as well. And then start to circle this leg around. Now bizarrely what I want you to imagine is that you're going to unscrew your leg. So if that was going to happen, you would start that movement small and you would gradually have to make those circles bigger. And then when you feel like you've got to that point where your, your leg is unscrewed, you're going to start to screw it back in. So you're going to start big and then you're going to get small. 
Now we don't want to screw that leg in too tight because we need movement, flexibility and mobility, of course. So when you feel it's right, you're then going to rock this leg side to side, like you're rocking a baby to sleep. And of course, if you were doing that, you would be quite calm, you would be quite smooth and quite rhythmic. And then while you've got that movement going, just going to bring our right knee back in. Just catch the back of our thigh or maybe a shin bone and squeeze that leg in. If it feels nice, just curl on the head up and see if you can bring your legs towards your chest and then relax your head back down. So that left knee now is going to cross really tightly over the top of your right leg. We're going to take our arms out wide to the side. And we're going to bring our legs over towards our left hand first. This side I call the working side. Because that left leg now drags that right leg over with gravity and weight. And you should feel that stretching multiple places. So I'm not even going to say where you'll feel that today. Because what I'd like you to do is really sort of be mindful of where you feel that most. But I would say if it's tugging at your right shoulder and you're, it's dragging your right arm off the floor, just move your arm. Take your mind away from your shoulder. One more breath here. And then slowly over towards the more twisted side, the more relaxing, comfortable. Oh my goodness, this feels good side. And then again, whatever you need to do with that left arm find comfort. Sometimes I even let that hand rest on my hip so I can take my mind completely away from it. Close your eyes. Beautiful. One more breath here. Bring the legs back into centre. Leave your right foot on the floor and just extend your left foot straight up. You can catch the back of your thigh. You can use your strip hip, strap here guys. You can find a big toe hold wherever you're comfortable. That right leg can stay bent or you can stretch it out. But we're just gently going to tap into the flexibility of our, of our hamstring now, whether our knee is bent or whether our leg is straight. It's a gracious move. It's a breath led move. Don't grab your leg and pull. All you'll do is find tension in that leg and that will then stay tense. So it's a work in progress. If it feels good for you, we're just going to bow our head up towards our leg. Maybe take our gaze down towards our right leg on the floor. And if you want a little lower abdominal strength, then you're just going to hover that right leg just one or two centimetres off the mat. Take a relax through the shoulders and while your head is raised, catch both knees into your chest and lower your head back to the floor. Back massage, side to side, around and around. Just place your left foot on the floor, bring your right ankle to the outside of that left knee and squeeze that leg in, find that sweet feeling in the right side of the hip. It's one of those um, poses where you can actually be quite forceful and you can pull that leg in quite tightly and it's, I suppose it's, we're going against it really because we're looking really to feel tension there. Usually we're trying to avoid it, but I want you to find that feeling. And then try and lose the tension by just having a, a little move around. Or even sort of massaging in mid-air. We're going to tuck our right elbow underneath our knee, catch our foot with our other hand, and take that other leg away. That can be straight or bent. Start your DIY legs. We're going to unscrew our leg. So today is our yoga DIY. <laughs> Make those circles a little bigger. And when you're there, you're going to go back the other way, start big until you feel you've screwed your leg back in. Not too tightly lined, but it feels right. And then see if you can get that nice rhythmic, calming, side to side, rock your baby feel. Beautiful. While you're rocking your baby to sleep, bring your left leg back in. Back of your thigh or your shin is fine to hold. 
big squeeze. And if you're happy to curl your head up to meet that leg, see if you can get your leg and your chest to meet somewhere in the middle and lower your head back to the mat. So we're going to cross our right knee tightly over our left. Take your arms out of the way, bring your arms out to the side and take your legs to your right side first. Again, find and feel that. I feel that quite firmly, quite strongly in my obliques and my hip. You might feel it in your glutes. should really be able to notice that. One more breath here. And let's take our legs over towards our left hand. Our oh, hello twist. Let's stay here for a little while. Side. Exhale. Just be nice to your shoulders and arms if they need to move, let them move. Again, be nice to your legs if you need to just adjust them a little bit. Absolutely. Your legs. One more breath here. Let's come back into the center. And place your left foot on the floor, stretch your right leg up. You can use your strap again if it's handy. You can keep this left leg bent or straight. And then just tap into that. Each time you exhale, maybe there's a little bit more space to move into. So give yourself a range of movement. Don't go pull that leg into 100% on your first breath. Maybe take a few breaths and then maybe just find 90% so we don't draw on that tension. Again, if it feels nice for you, you're going to lift your head up, look down the line of your left leg. Option to just hover that leg off the mat. So we have a little scissor split legs. And then just catch in both knees. And as you lower your head, give your legs a lovely big bear hug. Rock side to side, round and around, whatever you're comfortable with. Place both feet on the ground and let your hands come comfortably and relax alongside you. Take a little imprint of your spine like you were going to squash something between your mat and your back. Lift your hips up and come up into a bridge. Tuck your shoulders under so you feel like you're climbing those shoulders and then squeeze your bottom to see if you can get a little height into your hip bridge. Gently roll your spine down through each vertebrae, each bone at a time. Imagine getting your bottom a little bit closer towards your heels as you land. Inhale, take your arms over your head so your arms feel lazy and long. And exhale, lift your hips up to that same bridge you just found. But as you lower your hips, lower your arms at the same time and see if they can both come down, all floaty and relaxed. And then take your arms over your head again, nice and long and nice and lazy. Lift your hips up, push your feet firm into the ground, squeeze your hips, climb the shoulders. And then exhale as you lower your hips, just roll down through your back as well. Everything comes down calm, relaxed and comfortable. We're going to do that one more time. So taking the arms behind you. And pushing your hips up above you. And gently rolling both down together. Exhale. As you come down to your back, stretch your legs out in front of you. Take your arms the last time behind you. Give your body this lovely big stretch up. You know that feeling when you wake up and you just have to have a big stretch and your, your body's craving space. So let's give it that space it needs as we yawn out a breath. And then bring your arms all the way down by your side of, side of you into Shavasana. Now if you practice with me regularly, you'll know that I can, you can either stay here in Shavasana, give you as much time as you need. 
And while I say goodbye to you, you can just uh, take as, as many breaths or as many minutes as you need. Or you can finish the class with me by just walking your feet underneath your knees. And then whichever way you're comfortable, guys, just bring yourself up to the seated. And we'll say goodbye together at the end of the class. So whatever way you're comfortable, in a seated position, just take a nice roll back and down of your shoulders. We're just going to drop our chin to the chest. As this class has been about flexibility and mobility, let's just have a little move around out through our head and neck to finish the practice. So maybe like you were doing a big smile, tracing a big smile with your head big cheesy grin from side to side. Or if you wish, you can just do like a, a big figure of eight there in front of you. Whatever feels nice, just to make sure that we are targeted everywhere in our body today. And then just finishing with your chin on your chest. I'm gonna lift our head up, roll our shoulders back and down. Take a breath in together. Raise the arms above the head and bring the hands all the way down to your heart and then stay. Thank you so much for joining me for this flexibility and mobility flow and I hope to see you all again really soon. Thank you again. Bye bye.